Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated, and what a few episodes we have had. I think two episodes ago. The last one was, was quite long because I was trying to find a place to, to bring it to a natural end, and we just went from one crisis to another. Uh, but two episodes back, Maul Toli lost the High Kingship. And in the last episode, the High Kingship was destroyed outright. And at the end of the last episode, I said we were going to go and we were going to raise our armies and go and help one of our allies in uh, Savoy, effectively. You can see they're at minus 52% war score. We have some issues of our own, however. In our suggestions box, we have quite a lot of suggestions. At the bottom, close to the bottom, we can change uh, an Earl's contract. There's not much we can get out of it. He doesn't have many soldiers, so not really much of a point in increasing his... Um, his levy contributions, he's actually making a loss at the moment in taxation, so if anything, we should probably uh, reduce his taxation. One of our daughters can marry, we're having a lot of problems finding somebody to um, to marry anyone in our family off to. We can ransom a Jarl, and we will get, I think, 60-something gold at the moment for her, but as she earns more money, she'll pay more and more. So we're going to hold on to her for a while. Again, we're having problem. Finding uh, problems finding spouses, but at the top, Realm will lose land when a vassal dies, and here is that vassal, uh, and Realm will lose land when vassal inherits, and here is that vassal. Chieftain Bran, our brother, the former High King of Ireland, under whom the title was destroyed. His son, you can see him there as primary heir, is the High Chieftain of Ulster. And Bran is the uh, the chief of Galloway. If Bran dies, Galloway will become part of Ulster, and we lose it. If his son dies, Bran will inherit the uh, high chiefdom, and we will lose Galloway again. So I spent a while thinking of, of what to do. We could try and revoke his title, but uh, there's a very low chance that he'll he'll accept. So we could try and befriend him and make it more likely that we could revoke his title. There's a much easier solution to all of this. This is uh, the the parts of Maltoli's mind spinning at 100 miles an hour and then he just calms down. Just calms down. And he has a little think. And he realizes there is a vastly, vastly, vastly easier solution. Then again, the last time he came up with an easier solution, which was to try and subjugate Bran's holdings, or uh, subjugate Bran's title, the title was destroyed, and we ended up wasting our once-in-a-lifetime uh, subjugation war to take a single county. But this time it'll work. In the last episode, we also saw Maltoli lose his generous trait and become arbitrary after a, a number of mental breakdowns. I should just bring up the kid first of all and show you. Uh, he's Chieftain Kukarka Moor, Mach Murna, a grandson of Kukarka. He has 10 out of 145 soldiers. Vastly inferior to us, he holds both counties, he has no allies. We've lost that generous trait. I don't think Maltoli would have done this if it hadn't been for the fact that he has lost his, uh, he is no longer generous. The stress of attempting to re-establish the High Kingship have gotten to him. We spent the entire last episode either defending ourselves or defending others. And now Maltoli has realized that if he is to achieve anything, he must begin the reconquest of Ireland now. Uh, the awkward thing is that one of our vassals is actually fighting currently for uh, the earldom of Ulster. So they don't have a large enough army to continue sieging it down. I don't know if we can see them. Uh, we can't, but that's um, that's Durham. They actually don't have a large enough army to siege down, um, uh, down Patrick. So we might manage to take the whole thing one way or another. The reconquest of Ireland begins now. A pop-up that we haven't seen in quite some time. Our spouse uh, feels that she could contribute something by training one of our 
counselors, uh, the bishop or our spy master would both uh, we'd both gain fifteen opinion. However, Kiron, who is in most need of some training, uh, will lose fifteen. But we're going to send, and we're only at thirteen at the moment. But we're going to send our wife Lasarina to um, to serve as a tutor to him. We've been heavily stressed of late, and our good friend, Chieftain Sorkver, this is the guy that Flan Sinna uh, imprisoned and was going to allow to starve to death in revenge for his son Otar's death, but uh, we've actually become good friends with him. We released him from our prison when uh, when Molto Lee came to power, because Molto Lee had no idea why this man was in his prison, so uh, we've become good friends. We're going to lose a lot of stress. And so our armies set forth, ironically enough, from Galloway itself. So Bran is looking across the Irish Sea and watching the conquest of his son's territories. I've split the armies in half. One is going to go and uh, and visit Dunanaul and siege that down. We were going to pay a visit to Dunanaul in the last episode, but we didn't get a chance to. Uh, we've come in against a tiny force. And I see we're down to minus 93% in that war in Savoy. Again, if we were to try and put the army to sea, sail them down there, attack, then bring them back, it would just be... Well, we wouldn't have to bring them back, but we could... Um, it would just be too much effort. It would be just too much effort, and we're wasting... We're wasting too much time. Connacht is having its own problems, which, don't you worry, we're going to take advantage of in a few minutes. Uh, here is Lyachnon, Flansinna's brother, and then the title went to Geralt II, uh, named after his grandfather, Lyachnon and Flansinna's father. Uh, then his son, inherited from what I can see, yeah. And then at about three years of age, he abdicated to his cousin, and... Now he's been forced to abdicate, and it's gone back to Lachnan the Second. So Connacht is in quite a lot of anarchy. It's seeing just as many rulers as the Kingdom of Ireland did in its in its last few days. I'm saying it's in anarchy, but it's the um, it's the largest territory at the moment. It's kind of disappointing to see, but Flan Sinna's grandchildren have gone to war with each other. I think it's what are we looking at? The Manx claim to Inner Hebrides. So Brangan would have ruled the Isle of Man, and Cian would have ruled uh, the Isles, if I am correct. And now they're uh, they're fighting amongst each other. And when I say they're fighting amongst each other, of course, they're dead. Uh, their children are fighting amongst each other. And this is a tremendous pity. I was only I was only looking at this guy before the game started. Uh, Rua, Mok Cian O'Rourke. As you can see, he's the founder of a bastard branch of the family, the O'Rourke. Um, here is his father and uncle, Cian, and here is his mother and aunt, Orla. So he's just been killed in battle, and it looks like his sister inherited the inner Hebrides. I won't lie, I'd been looking at this guy as a potential successor before... Oh wait, no, he wasn't a potential. I came looking for him to see if he could be a potential successor because he, his prowess is quite good, in fairness. Uh, he's, he's some good stats. He would have grown into a good and interesting figure. Of course, he had quite an interesting uh, family lineage as well. So he's been killed in battle, and that's what's uh, set off this war. I also forgot to mention, it seems as though we had some audio issues in the last couple of episodes. The audio was the game audio seemed a bit high, so do give me a, a, a shout with how that is going now. Oh no, we lost we lost that war that we were supposed to be helping in, that we did absolutely nothing to contribute to. And so, down Patrick, the capital of Ulster has fallen. We've actually taken our nephew hostage in the siege, and that is going to bring the entire conflict to an end. We will enforce our demands. Greetings, Uncle.
while we're here and while we have the armies ready, it would be a terror to go back empty-handed. And we have set them to raiding. We're moving them south. And as we do so, we will be raiding on the island of Ireland for the first time without Dovtuk. Because if I'm correct, Dovtuk was commanding the first army. A siege master. Counselor. A physician, a man who has served... I was going to say served countless high kings. No, he just served Flansina and uh, Moltoli. I'm glad. I'm glad that he was alive to see the beginning of the restoration of the kingdom. He's a man that gave tremendous service to the kingdom. And uh, there you go. 59 years of age. At least he died of natural causes. Unlike some of our other great generals. I'm thinking of Ian Bacon. Speaking of great generals, we're uh, we're a bit short at the moment. And do you know what we're going to do? We're actually going to command the army ourselves. I think it's only fitting that we should be involved in making our mark on the island of Ireland. We're kind of short-handed when it comes to marshals who can replace Duftuk. I think we'll go with one of our earls. Uh, it'll keep him happy. He's a 13 in comparison to, to uh, a 15 of our uh, one of our knights. They're both tough soldiers, however, so we're not we're not missing out too much, I don't think. And for his first task, what we'll do is we will put him increasing uh, control in Ulster. And we've gotten a pop up for the first time. Since the reign of Green Graffador, I hold, or a character that I control, uh, is the uh, the head of... I actually forgot what they were the head of. Yeah, we're the head of the culture. And things really are not going well here. I don't know what way did I read it before. I thought we only needed half of the, the innovations to progress to the next age. We need all of them. And it's going to be... 344 years before we get public works. I think are we being we're being exposed to onagers, so that's 38 years, and we'll have barracks in 46 years. So we could either bring onagers down to 21, or uh, stick with barracks and wait out uh, 38 years before we see onagers being discovered naturally. Not great choices. Not great choices. I think we'll leave it uh, like this for now. Our victorious forces return with some much needed gold. I won't say it's much needed, but it might be. It might be if things go bad in the next few minutes. We have uh, two useless prisoners that can be uh, ransomed off for nothing. And we've just released them. Uh, we've just taken a prisoner here in our raid on Connacht. I think he's the brother of the High Chieftain. He is, so we're going to ransom him for a grand total of 25. And this Jarl down here that we've had for a while, uh, it's now up to 76 gold. She's making 0 0.7 per month. We could hold on until she gets up to 100. Do you know what? We'll just take that 76, because it'd be worse if she died in prison. Because it'd be worse if she died in prison. Because it'd be worse if she died in prison. Because it'd be worse if she died in prison. We're in a position to create a new kingdom. What the hell would you call this monstrosity? Do we have a single county that doesn't touch the sea? Waterworld? Waterworld 2? We're not going to found a new kingdom. I've sent out the, uh, the hurls to bring some new knights to me. And what we're doing at the moment, I've... Uh, taken my men back into Ulster and stood them down. They got us a good chunk of gold and some prestige. And we were preparing for the next part of our plan. But instead, I see down here that uh, Thomond is being sieged down. It's part of Connacht and it's being sieged down by Munster. And do you know what? We're going to just, we're just going to take a little break. We're going to take a little break and we're going to watch what happens here. I think they're at 40% war score already. Uh, 48 
So that whole conflict down there is dragging on a bit. Uh, Kamakth has managed to actually siege down Osri. Munster has managed to siege down um, Thoman. So it's, it's going a bit all over the place. Again, like I said, Moltodi is shoving on. He's into his early 40s at this stage. We've spent a long time defending and defending our allies. So we're going to have to continue if we want to re-establish the Kingdom of Ireland instead of a fragmented kingdom like we were being offered there a couple of minutes ago. Uh, we're going to have to continue, and now we're going to complete Ulster, and we're going to take the Earldom of Oriel. The army marches across from Galloway again. We're passing down Patrick. And heading down for Dundelgan. The island is fractured. Connacht made some bit of an attempt to possibly re-establish the High Kingship. But they didn't make enough of an attempt. Nobody had the drive and the determination of Moltoli to re-establish the High Kingship. We're getting a lot of pop-ups. Uh, the ruler in Ossery has died. I think that might have uh, something to do with the uh, the conflict that's going on there at the moment. And actually, it looks like Munster has been uh, given a bit of a baton by Connacht. And we also get a lifestyle perk. Shorter truces and no prestige penalty for breaking them. I think that tells you the direction that Moltoli is going in. The forces of Connacht and Munster have come on to Desmond. And they're baiting the living daylights out of each other. Or they're going to start doing so in a couple of seconds. There you go. I was pointing out that um, we lost an alliance that was with Ossery. That might actually be slightly beneficial for us. In a roundabout way. Some of the alliances that we've gotten into are acting like straitjackets. Uh, when we need to start uh, fighting and declaring war against people. So that might be slightly beneficial. Some new knights have just arrived in court. Aaron is just off the boat and he's being put in charge of the army um, because he has the military engineer trait and hopefully that'll bring this war to an end. Or not this war, but um, it'll bring down the siege a bit faster. How does Moltoli intend to rule? Loyalty or fear? And this is quite ironic. We, um, we could use fear as a tool... Uh, is a far more effective tool. Gain 24 Dread. Wound. Flansina Mokbrangen. And um, he would lose 20 opinion to us because we are cruel. I'm not sure you're old enough to remember your grandfather. But uh, what we'll do is we'll just go with... Um, I have more important people to impress. At the moment, because he's arbitrary, he uh, will gain 5 stress from being a generous liege. Um, vassal taxes will go down, direct vassal opinion will go up. So yeah, I think we'll just go with we have more impressive people, or we have more important people to impress, and this is, um, this is the, oh, I don't know what the hell he is, the High Chieftain of Mercia. I think he's actually a nephew of mine. He's indeed. So that's split apart on the death of Kukarkamur, or Kukarkamur's son. God, this is confusing. To be more efficient at this, I should have probably split the army, sent one for Brefni, one for Oriel. We're at 26%, and we're now going for the capital of Connacht, into Drumahair. And the Munster army is also sieging down Connacht proper. I remember an episode or two back commenting on... The, the caliber of knights that we had, and we were in bad trouble. We've just hired three knights, and until we hired them, we had a 7, a 9, and a 10 in the ranks because we were we were so badly caught for knights. They were all the knights that we had. So the last episode, we lost three of the greatest knights or champions ever to serve the kingdom, even though they weren't serving the kingdom of Ireland. Uh, Brangan. Kian and Dovdoleha, who was captured and blood-eagled. Something I'm still bitter about. 
A couple of minutes ago, I decided not to use fear to gain the respect and loyalty of Flansinna, Flansinna MacBrangan, the Earl of the Isle of Man. Instead, our Chancellor has been visiting him, uh, his uncle, Ciaran. And uh, we got this exact same pop-up. Flansinna isn't too impressed with us. Uh, we got the same pop-up. Flansinna's father, Brangan, generated this same pop-up for uh, a visit to Kukurka Moor's realm during the reign of Flansinna. So, there you go. Deja vu. Kiron, uh, what have you done? Oh, Lord, we've sieged down Drumahair, and we have captured Kuanan again. This poor kid. This is the second time he's been captured in how many years? We enforce our demands. Greetings, High Chieftain Mole Toli of Man. Blessings upon you and your house. Well, thank you. It's We're, we're the same house, so yeah, I presume that's, that's fitting. Uh, so be it. We're going to bring the army back into Dundelgan. What's going on here exactly? Uh, it, do we have a Mead Civil War? Gari is fighting an independence war. How very interesting. Here we have one of Flansinna's daughters, Bridget. I can't remember, is this the one that we were specifically training as a potential physician? Uh, we put her under the um, the tutelage of Dovtuk, who just passed away. We actually haven't appointed a court physician since. Uh, she has the highest learning at 15, which isn't too shabby. She is, however, a mastermind philosopher. So, uh, yeah, we're going to appoint her as court physician. And uh, she might very well improve in her skills. We've also married her off to one of our new knights. Uh, he's not new. I think he might have been here for a while. I can't remember. Are you new? You've been, you've been here for a decade. Oh, wow. Well, it's nice to meet you. This whole scenario down, down here is causing a small bit of an issue for us. Munster is actually losing, I won't say heavily. They're at uh, minus 40. Well, yeah, heavily. They're at minus 47%. There's a lot of anarchy going on up here in Scotland as well. Now, here is Sweden. And you know for a fact that there is nothing that we are more terrified than the Swedes. The Swedes are the most terrifying power on Earth. We're seeing all, everything that the Enail, that Flansinna the First, worked so hard to create. It's all gone. It's all been destroyed. And we can, quite rightly, blame a lot of that on Flansinna. I think Flansinna is a lot like Leto II from Dune. He saw a vision of something more terrifying than the Gardariki. Something more terrifying even than Starkiller Face, the Metal King of Sweden. And he set Ireland on a golden path. The kingdom was rent asunder after his death, and now we have somebody struggling to reassemble it, driven by the knowledge that, yes, there is a threat greater than the Swedish. What is that threat? It's even more Swedes. The... King of Norway, which is this tiny region, and this tiny region, has allied with the King of Sapmi. Massive region up here. They have overwhelming forces, and as you can see, they are going to conquer uh, Sweden. So we're going to see all these red areas here combine. And we're going to see the, a chunk of these red areas combine. And then we're going to be left with just two entities. Up until now it was three. We're just going to be left with two entities. This guy ruling Sweden. Allied to the King of Sapmi. I presume I'm getting that wrong. With um, with a massive force. 
Now, I would love to take advantage of this at the moment, but uh, at any moment, if we were to declare war to take one of these areas, within a second you could suddenly see Norway taking Sweden and then becoming the leader in that war goal with just this huge coalition. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to raise our armies, put them on raiding, and uh, we're going to raid down some of Sweden here just while we're waiting for some kind of a conclusion. I won't say while we're waiting, uh, but just while we're looking to, uh, to a conclusion to some of the stuff that's happening down here. We're over our domain limit. There are very few people that we can actually give land out to. There is a substantial amount of children of Flan Sinna. So one of them, Kiron, a champion and our chancellor, is going to get Oriel. And I'm not too sure why, but we've lost Bridget as our physician. Uh, her husband has gone to serve in uh, Kiron's court, which is awkward. That means we've probably lost some knights as well. So we're gonna we're gonna go to what looks like the brothel. This is the same artwork from the uh, the brothel. So we're going to go to the brothel and look for a, a physician to replace her because we don't really have anyone in the in the the kingdom itself in the kingdom. The kingdom air quotes. We've gotten some offers and they are both absolutely atrocious. We have a seventy five year old fornicator. Yeah, sure. We're gonna we're gonna give her fifty quid to uh, to join and serve for like five days. Both of them failed to impress me. Our troops have set foot. This is the first time that we're actually sieging down uh, Swedish territory in a very long time. We tend to stay the hell away from Sweden, but this is amazing how weak they've become after the the death of Starkiller Face. Oh, that is disappointing. Luod has come of age. He's a tough soldier. Not great. Not great. They grow up so fast. Uh, I can't remember who was who was training him. It was um, Monia, who's gone off to I don't know where the hell he's gone to uh, North Africa. Uh, he's. Yeah, he's not on the list anywhere. Yeah, that's that's not great. Lord was going to be our uh, potential successor, but yeah, there's there's nothing too appealing there in terms of uh, of traits. Again, like I said, the comment section has been demanding a a high military figure. We're not getting high military figures at the moment. Um, just while I'm here. Here's another name that we met in the last episode. So I was thinking it was Sith Ma. But considering that Ma is pronounced Ma, we should have expected that the first word would be pronounced She. And that's how it's pronounced. It's Shiama. I actually had to check this up. I've never heard of it before. But quite fittingly, quite fittingly, what Shiama means is... Uh, so Ma is good. So... Tame Gama, I am good. So Shiyama means a good peace or good spirit. And I think that's a very fitting name. Maybe that's where Moltholi and uh, his wife Lasarina's minds were in the last episode. Uh, we had that peace with the Swedish, the overwhelming Swedish force that we somehow managed to, to battle to a standstill and get a white peace. Uh, so a, a very fitting name. Oh, and there's Volvari. Another great Irish name. I forgot I had him. I didn't actually spot that I had him uh, him highlighted. So there's there's Vulvari. Luaid. Or Luod. So the A father creates uh, an O sound. You'll hear it in Dol. So Dol Aaron. And Fall. F A father I L for um, uh, Inish Fall. The, the island of destiny. So it's Luod. And Shiama. They grow up so fast. I'm not going to lie, it does feel great to be burning Sweden. Well, Swedish Scotland. I presume this is like a... A restoration or something. We're, we're restoring money that was uh, raided from Ireland. We're restoring it to Ireland. I think we're doing a, a much better 
the deal, however, or we're getting a better deal. Because I can't imagine the Swedes would have had a huge amount to um, to raid from Ireland. And we got a little pop-up there. I've been following a few people, some strange and interesting people in the kingdom. Do you know what? We might as well, instead of going that way, we might as well go this way. Um, Astrid has died of old age at 66. We could, and probably the annals will blame her for the destruction of the Kingdom of Ireland, or at the very least for the destruction of Flansina's mind. And if we look at it, or if we maybe come to Flansina, uh, he's already lost a substantial number of his children. He does have a lot of them. Uh, Brangan died from his wounds. Uh, Roche died in childbirth. Uh, there's Kian, uh, died from his wounds. Otar died in prison. Here's Grima. She died under mysterious circumstances. I'm not too sure who she married to or anything. Uh, I forget who they are. They're actually in... They rule some part of what, what used to be the Kingdom of Ireland, or the, the kind of the, the British part of the Kingdom of Ireland. Uh, and who else are we? Um, Christina died from stress. And then we had uh, Koning, who of course was the first child, first male child born to Flansina and Astrid uh, after they married. And Koning, like I said, I was thinking of, um, oh, he would have been a good, he would have been a potential successor with some good stats. And he was given the name Koning in honour of the Anglo-Saxon connections, but there you go. Uh, one of the, the great figures in Irish history, Astrid, is dead. Another of our sons comes of age, and you know what? He's a better negotiator than his father, a charismatic negotiator. They grow up so fast, and there is a betrothal there. Um, so this is to House Bar. Or at least it was. And it still is. I got confused there for a moment. So we signed this um, agreement with her father. But her brother is now the uh, the ruler. Uh, bringing in 1,200 troops. So she does have the spindly trait. It's not great. So we'll send that proposal. And we will uh, keep that bit of an alliance going. If it's ever needed for anything. I made a second attempt to find some, uh, to find a court physician. Didn't do very well. So what I'm going to do is I am going to appoint our bishop. He's a, a man of learning, and he um, he has some uh, hobbies that I would say would give him experience applying ointments and cures. So this is our new court physician and bishop. We're returning our raiders home with a substantial sum of money and prestige. But they're not totally finished yet. They have one last job to do while we're here. Um, so I hope I have the two of them. I have indeed. We're actually going to march them into our nephew's territory. Uh, so this isn't our nephew himself. There is Kilna, quite a, a famous... Um, he's the son of Dovdaleha, if I'm correct. Yeah, there you go. Oh, no, he's the son of the guy Dovdaleha killed. Uh, but this is uh, territory under our nephew's rule. And I think we're going to get 40 gold from there. That was a good day's shopping. They're giving me all the crazy names now. We've had another son, Urquhart, I think. Let's see. Let's see what else we can come up with. Rian, or Rion. Ah, that's simple enough. Let's go, with Rion. Uh, may you grow to be strong and wise, my son. I'm not too sure how or when it happened. If we come and check, uh, the Earldom of Connacht was inherited in 992. 
towards the end of last year by our vassal, the Earl of Cumberland. So Connop has come into uh, our Manx holdings. And we're now in a position where we contain or we control three, four and five Irish counties. Uh, there's a couple of things that we could do. I was planning on possibly taking Munster. I was waiting for this war actually to come to an end. And I, if Munster had taken uh, Thomond, I would have had three counties up here. And I would have uh, waged war for the Duchy of Munster. So we would have taken these two counties. And then we would be up to six. But the long-term plan, the long-term goal had always been with five or six counties... Because we need seven to declare war for our claim to the High Chiefdom of Meath. Allies have entered the war on the side of our nephew. Not many, but just to make sure that we can pull this off and bring it to an end, we are going to hire our good buddies in Madman's company. Uh, are the Gologloss available? They are. They're almost twice as expensive, however. And you know what? We actually have the money that if it comes to it, we could hire them as well. So we'll hire them. They will uh, start recruiting in, in the capital. And with a, a pincer-like movement, we will move... We might actually be able to hit Dublin's forces before they um, they stand up to full capacity. I don't think that's even their full force, because they're actually fighting in another war as well somewhere. And we will have our mercenaries. Siege Athlone itself. And we're prolific again. Bless them, the little devils. Our mercenaries are not enough to take Athlone. They will, however, serve us if anyone jumps us all of a sudden. And we do have other uses for them if they are needed. And, of course, Meath has extensive holdings. Uh, they've managed, actually, to subjugate... Oh, what would this be? Another cousin of theirs? And take back Mercia. So they now actually have a, an extensive holding throughout the center of England. Challenging that of uh, Kukur Kamur. And in the midst of all this, we've managed to gain a new diplomacy lifestyle perk. We're going to continue down our diplomat tree, Ducal Conquest, to reduce... Uh, title creation costs, that might be very useful to us shortly. And then we're down into forced vassalization, causes belli, and then we can uh, fabricate claims on counties. That's not exactly the most beneficial to us, unless we become feudal somehow. But it will aid us in getting as far as diplomat. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, finishing off this tree is pretty much all we can do with Moltholi. Gari is sending down a substantial force against us for some reason. Um, we're not at, or we are at war with them, because they're part of Meath, even though they were fighting an independence war, so, yeah, no, they're still part of Meath. Uh, we've taken a few people hostage, which is always good. And I think this is the first substantial battle that we're fighting as part of the reconquest of the Kingdom of Ireland. Our nephew will pay quite a lot of money for the return of his son and heir. Almost enough to pay off the mercenaries that we hired. So we're going to ransom him. It might drop the war score by a small bit, but that doesn't matter too much. Says he now. I thought we wouldn't need these mercenaries to help us siege down the place, but uh, the fort level is too damn high. They've been reinforcing Athlone. 
And this is the first attack on Athlone since the Viking days, since the forces of Ghana, under... Uh, who were commanded by... I'm trying to think, who were they commanded by? Um, the uh, the Gardariki. We're seeing a substantial Mead army coming in to relieve Dublin. We might have to pull our army out and attack them. I think that would be the best course of action. We're making a run for it. Into the mountains, a good defensive region to the south of Dublin, uh, where a couple of armies have gone when, uh, when coming on their attack. Our mercenaries have gone in first of all. I don't think we'll hit these forces, but... There's the Battle of Wicklow that we just fought. We lost, in pretty much his first major engagement, we lost our uh, knight. Meath is back with another 1,200 soldiers. I don't think we killed any of theirs, and... Um, I got worried there for a second when I saw Vanya. I thought that was our friend Vanya. Uh, who's going to win this uh, siege down? Who's going to win the siege down? We've called in some allies to give us a hand. We're going to leave the mercenaries where they are. And we're going to... See if we can hit this Dublin army again. So the mercenaries at least will keep the, uh, the war progress going, I hope. Second Battle of Wicklow. Again, massive, massive, massive numbers for their uh, for their top knights. This was a war I expected would be over much faster than this, but Athlone has been fitted out with massive reinforcements uh, to protect it. I presume because of all those times that it came under Viking attack. We could stay for a while and help our friend, Chieftain Flansena, with his castle. Instead, we're going to lose some stress and we're going to leave. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit freaked out by that. CK2 has made me frightened of construction pro projects in castles. And he's not a great knight, but again, we're bringing Aaron with his military engineer expertise. We're bringing him in to lead the army in Athlone, and hopefully that will uh, contribute to um, to sieging the place down faster. Meath is returning. They're actually almost at a level where we could send our reinforcements out to attack them in future, instead of having to go out and attack them ourselves. Maybe we'll be lucky and our allies will do something. No, I thought our allies might actually go up and attack Dublin. Um, what are we going to do here? We return command to somebody with a bit more skill actually uh, attacking. We'll march them across. Oh, never mind. Never you mind. I don't think that's an army allied with us. No, it's East Francia, uh, who is under the command, of course, of our friend King Popo. But uh, he won't he won't form an alliance with us, so we can put our siege expert back and march him back in around in a circle. And we really are catching Meath at an inopportune moment in time for them. In the midst of it all, we're being raided down 
by the massive um, allies of Norway. I don't know why. What are they? What are they coming for us for? And they're actually coming into Ireland proper. This is a bit worrying. So Sampi's forces seem to be, or uh, Sapmi's forces seem to be um, heading away. Uh, Dublin has come back in. They're going to come under immediate attack from our allies. As the lengthy siege of Athlone continues. But you can see there why we are worried about that um, that massive potential Norse-Finnish alliance. They had just 8,000 troops wandering around. After a lengthy period of time, Athlone has fallen. And we will bring our army and its reinforcements. We will uh, change the commander. Bring our entire army across. Hopefully, we'll be able to hit uh, this Dublin army. Somebody's head got ripped off. 36 forces are coming in at a very bad moment in time. And now it's just a matter of bringing this war to an end as quickly as possible. We're going to set foot in Welsh Meath, in David, and begin just sieging across in a straight line, basically. The King of Lothringa wishes to have an exchange of letters with us. Absolutely. King Quarantine II. Flan Sinna, Mach Brangan wishes to pursue his ambitions and interests a bit more. We're going to uh, maybe suggest some good books for him to read. He has high learning and he's also an astute intellectual. Our forces have landed in David and have began sieging down the area. And now I just need to, um, to keep pretending that I know things about scholarship. The last time we got a letter from the Queen of England, we went with, let's discuss the finer points of etiquette, and she wasn't too impressed with that. But uh, this guy, just like Flansinna that we looked at, is an astute intellectual, so we will go with the uh, finer points of etiquette and see how that treats him. Uh, my contract with the... Uh, I didn't actually even spot that. My contract with the... Um, with the, the Isle of Man, or the, the Mad Men group, has already ran up. Looks like it didn't work. Um, or maybe maybe we just didn't do a good job, but we're after... Uh, we haven't made friends with the um, with the King of Lothringa. Eh? Whoops. And strangely enough, with what's going on in Ireland, this is a perfect opportunity. We will rehire Madman's company. They are deposited in Desmond, and we will send them up. And do you know what? We might actually even just leave them to defend Dublin from our nephew's forces. Um, we don't have a lot of great troops for sieging down things. Speaking of which, let's change the commander here again. Oh well, we have a lot of commanders now and poor Aaron is way down at the bottom. He's just gotten worse as a knight. And that's because he has something wrong with his lungs. Pneumonia. Yet another lifestyle perk from Maltoldi. We're going for forced vassalage. What a time for it to um, to pop up for us. But this does really bring home just how long it is taking to bring this uh, war to a conclusion. We're making much better progress in David. Our mercenaries have gone in against uh, the army from Dublin. I thought they were going to get some reinforcements in, but they didn't. They're going to get a tiny, tiny handful in now, but it's far too late. Yeah. 
We've sieged down David. The Isles seem to be sieging Fife, but I'm not entirely too sure how or why. Uh, we're not at war with them or anything like that. We're up to a 92% war score now, thanks to our allies sieging down uh, this region here. Let's see just how long it's taking us to siege this place. Our allies might actually out-siege us, which would be great. And after what seems like an eternity, we have a 100% war score. After four years, is that all? And we're in a position to enforce our demands to Meath. Greetings, Uncle. Tales of your misdeed are told from Ireland to Cathay. And he complies. So be it. What a mess we have here. What an absolute mess. Let's start to clean it up a bit. We'll come to Maltholi on the 17th of June, 997. He has a claim to the Kingdom of Ireland. The title is not yet created. The, the de jure capital will be the earldom of Dublin. And for 150 gold... You are now a mighty high king. And the Kingdom of Ireland, in some way, make, shape, or form, has been restored. What we're going to do quickly is offer vassalization to the other Irish powers on the island of Ireland. And then we'll see from there what the next step is. So I offered vassalization to a number of people there. The only problem is that they're all at war. All the uh, the constituent elements of the Kingdom of Ireland are at war. But after a a considerable period of time, if we come and if we look at the uh, the the High Kingship, I do have to sort out the um, the actual succession laws as well. But I won't be doing that right now. Uh, if we look at the title. Maltholi came to power, if I'm correct, in uh, 967 and was deposed in 970. The High Kingship itself was destroyed in 975. And Maltholi has managed to re-establish it. And I can tell you that there'll be... He will, he will have a different view on the traditional rotation of the High Kingship now that it has been uh, created through his hard work and his dedication to God. We're not out of the woods yet. We're we're three years short of the um, of the deadline for the end of this series. Like I said, we're probably going to be continuing into the early ten hundreds, into uh, seeing out the reign of of Maltholi at the very least. There is a power, there is a, a threat, a danger greater even than the Swedish. They've somehow managed to hold on to they're no longer at war um, for Norway to take all their land on a good day they can put together about 11,000 troops but Norway with 900 to its name is backed by an alliance of 13,000 so there are substantial forces now at play that we need to prepare ourselves uh, to resist and the only way that we can do that is by further conquest. And we will be seeing those conquests in the episodes ahead. Thank you for joining me on this one again. It was another long one. I did not think we were going to, be, to get so bogged down in the conquest of Meath. But we have taken it. Uh, the capital is actually in Desmond at the moment. But I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to see between now and the next episode about how to actually move the capital to Dublin. I think it's... Um, uh, no, it's not to press that button. We'll we'll see in a minute. I'll I'll actually I'll actually get the capital up there by the start of the next episode because I do want it there. It has development seven. Um, I might actually I might actually wait to bring control back up there first of all and then move the capital. So we will have Dublin as our capital instead of Athlone, even though it seems to have a much greater fortification. 
Like I said, it was another long one. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode. And I hope that you will join me for the next one as we continue our conquests, as we enforce, whether it is wanted or not, we enforce vassalization of the remainder of the island of Ireland. And then we begin looking across to Britain, which has caused considerable chaos for us uh, up to now. Especially the, the Swedish and the, uh, the, North, the uh, Norwegian presence there. We're going to have to do something about those. Uh, thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you on the next one.